Central nervous system is devoid of lymphatic fluids. If lymphatic fluid is absent in central nervous system, then how does it function? In central nervous system, lymph is replaced by clear, colorless and transparent watery fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. And the amazing fact about cerebrospinal fluid is, this fluid does not coagulate on standing. Let us talk about properties, composition and functions of cerebrospinal fluid. First of all, let me tell you this, cerebrospinal fluid is also known as CSF. You know, we get so many answers by the name itself. Lymph cerebro means part of a brain, spinal means spinal cord, and fluid means liquid. So it won't be wrong if we say the liquid present in brain and spinal cord is called cerebrospinal fluid. And the cerebrospinal fluid is also known as ultrafiltrate of plasma, fluid with low protein content and few cells. And if we talk about the composition of cerebrospinal fluid, then it consists of 99.13% of water, 0.87% of solids, organic solids involve amino acid, sugar, uric acid, lactic acid, carotenoin, urea, cholesterol, and the inorganic solids like calcium, potassium, phosphate, bicarbonates, sulfates, magnesium, etc. And the next topic is properties of cerebrospinal fluid. The cerebrospinal fluid is alkaline in nature with pH 7.33. And the specific gravity of cerebrospinal fluid is 1.005. And the rate of formation of cerebrospinal fluid is 0.3 milliliter per minute. And per day, it is like 600 to 700 milliliters. And you know, cerebrospinal fluid is renewed or cycle about 4 times every 24 hours. Now let us discuss about the functions of this special fluid present in central nervous system. So the cerebrospinal fluid provides buoyancy effect to our brain. The normal weight of a brain is about 1500 grams. And because of buoyancy effect provided by cerebrospinal fluid, the effective weight of brain is reduced to about 50 grams and this facilitates near ability of fade over neck region. So the person would feel 50 grams of out of total weight of about 1500 grams. Even though total weight of brain does not decrease, only the effective weight bound by the head is reduced by almost 30 times due to this effect. And the most important function of cerebrospinal fluid is cerebrospinal fluid acts as a shock absorber. Damage to central nervous system is almost irreparable. So the cerebrospinal fluid acts as a water cushion. Our brain is suspended in the fluid environment of cerebrospinal fluid. As a result of which, the impact on head is dissipated to wider area, so the direct impact on underlying brain tissues is minimized. Effective interstitial fluid which helps in the exchange of substance between blood and brain tissues. And the other functions of cerebrospinal fluid is to maintain microenvironment in brain to achieve and maintain excitability of neuronal tissues and this phenomena is called interstitium of brain. Similarly, it also helps in removal of metabolic wastes. It also takes part in gaseous exchange as it even contains some amount of oxygen and glucose. It provides nutrients to brain cells. And the mandatory work of cerebrospinal fluid is to provide protection against mechanical injuries. We talked so many things about cerebrospinal fluid and we said that it is present in the central nervous system of our brain. But do you know where exactly in central nervous system the cerebrospinal fluid is present? And how is it produced and circulated? Let's find it out. So in brain, there are four ventricles. Ventricles are cavities or hollow space present in our brain. You might be thinking that ventricles are present only in our heart, but it is present in our brain as well. The human heart consists of two ventricles, but the brain is winner over here. It consists of four ventricles. There are two lateral ventricles, one in each cerebral hemisphere and just below the lateral ventricles in the center of diencephalon, the third ventricle is present. Similarly, the fourth ventricle lies somewhere near the cerebellum. Third and the fourth ventricles are connected by a duct or pipe-like structure and the duct is named as cerebral aqueduct. The cavities of ventricles of brain is filled up with cerebrospinal fluid. Let's try to understand what makes ventricles to produce cerebrospinal fluid. In ventricles, there are breast-bordered cuboidal tissues known as choroid plexus. And choroid plexus consists of finger-like projection called microvilli. Or you can say they are networks of capillaries. 
The first thing present in ventricles is choroid plexus. The other structure present in the ventricles is ependymal cells. The cells are involved in the production of cerebrospinal fluid. In fact, they are the main source of cerebrospinal fluid. In ventricles, cerebrospinal fluid is produced by two different processes. The first process is active secretion and the other one is ultrafiltration. Active secretion is brought about by choroid plexus and the ultrafiltration is brought about by ependymal cells. Now let us discuss about the circulation of cerebrospinal fluid. So there is an aperture or opening in each lateral ventricles known as foramina of Monre. And with the help of foramina of Monre, cerebrospinal fluid produced in lateral ventricles are released and it circulates through third ventricles. And we know that third ventricles also produce some amount of cerebrospinal fluid. So both the fluid are mixed up and it passes to the fourth ventricle. As we know that third and fourth ventricle are connected by a duct or pipe-like structure known as cerebral aqueduct. So with the help of cerebral aqueduct, cerebrospinal fluid travels from third ventricle to fourth ventricle. Just for your information, let me tell you this. Cerebral aqueduct is also known as aqueduct of Sylvius. Our fourth ventricles also has openings called foramen of Magendi and foramen of Lusca. Through foramen of Magendi, cerebrospinal fluid reaches spinal canal. Through foramen of Lusca, cerebrospinal fluid reaches to subarachnoid space. We understood that central nervous system of our brain consists of ventricles, and ventricles are fluid-filled cavities which are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. But what is this thing about subarachnoid space? Subarachnoid space is in fact the outer container of brain, right? Our brain is covered by three layers, outer dura mater, middle arachnoid, and inner pyometer. And this arachnoid space is present between arachnoid and pyometer. And we got to know that subarachnoid space also contains cerebrospinal fluid. That means cerebrospinal fluid is not only present inside brain, it is also present outside the brain in subarachnoid space. So we talked about how cerebrospinal fluid travels from one ventricle to other and we got to know that from first ventricle it manages to travel to the fourth ventricle. Some part of cerebrospinal fluid from fourth ventricle travels in the spinal canal through foramen of Magendi. Some part of cerebrospinal fluid goes to subarachnoid space through an opening called foramen of Lusca. Just like choroid plexus, middle layer of brain that is arachnoid matter also contains network of capillaries called microvilli and they are addressed as arachnoid villi which are the finger-like projection. So the arachnoid villi absorb cerebrospinal fluid from arachnoid space and enters dura mater. Dura mater, the outer tough layer of brain, is further made up of two layers, outer and inner layer. And between the two layers, there is a space which is filled with deoxygenated or venous blood. You can say the venous blood flows in the space between two layers of dura mater. And the cerebrospinal fluid is now absorbed into dural venous sinuses by arachnoid villi. Sinuses are the veins for brain tissues. And this cycle of circulation of cerebrospinal fluid is repeated for four times per day. 